Obviously, computer technology is the way to analyze data in the ag world. Analyzing concentrations of pests and diseases may not be your ideal way to spend time on the internet, but it is for those looking to fight insects damaging crops around the planet. Colleen Bradford Krantz has more. This locust infestation in East Africa was already unusually large in 2019. Weather conditions continued to be ideal for the short-horned grasshoppers, and their numbers grew exponentially the following year. There are swarms that are, it's not uncommon to be, let's say, the size of, of Manhattan in, in New York City. Um, so, so they can be very big. Um, in one day, that swarm can eat the same amount of food as everybody in New York and California combined. It's this kind of infestation, if it were to occur on U.S. soil, that plant protection and quarantine, a unit within the U.S. Department of Agriculture, would be charged with monitoring and managing. This team of experts have spent the last few years improving their data analysis and mapping tools. The hope is to more precisely pinpoint problem populations of crop damaging insects, as well as plant diseases, before they get out of hand. I think most organizations these days are interested in creating um, dashboards or ways of viewing data. And you can look at, you know, pie charts, you can look at pictures, storyboards, any kind of information you want to share. And the technology has matured to the point where we can uh, make this uh, more readily available. The plant protection and quarantine dashboards are helping federal officials who are working in tandem with state plant health experts to decide where a limited amount of money should be spent to stop insect or bacterial disease threats to row crops. The moment a local official counts insect populations and enters the numbers into a database, it instantly becomes part of a larger pool of information. Well, if you go back a few years, we would have pencil and paper. We're more and more going towards electronic data collection. And uh, you could imagine when you have pencil and paper and transcribing that information to a computer, there's opportunities for error. And I think one-time collection helps reduce that. Royer's team says the dashboard interface can help with locating concentrations of various pests and diseases, as well as being used to pinpoint activity in a specific geographic location. I'm Derek Witt with Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, Plant Protection and Quarantine. What we're looking at here on this dashboard for the Grasshopper and Mormon Cricket Program is obviously a, a, a wealth of different metrics related to treatments and surveys but then the mapping component really adds a, another dimension of, of ability to dig into the data. The maps generated from the database can also be used to evaluate the effectiveness of the previous year's pesticide treatments. So we can zoom over to Wyoming and see that for the areas we treated last year in Wyoming, for the most part, whereas last year this was just peppered with reds and oranges, we were able to get in here and it looks like for the most part, the treatments were very successful because now we have dark blues, blues. Just like long-term weather forecasts, plant protection and quarantine officials can predict which areas might have the most trouble with a particular pest or plant disease in the coming months or years. And then generally how it works is we have our state plant health directors will submit requests for treatments, We're having a pretty good guess that we're going to have a very destructive grasshopper year. You can see we've already dug way down into the data just to see this stuff in Eastern Montana, uh, up here on the Flathead Indian Reservation. And then over here uh, in other parts of Eastern Montana, we had high nymphal grasshopper populations, which are areas you'll wanna treat because Nymphs obviously grow into adults and then the cycle goes forward. Eastern Montana ranchers can attest to the accuracy of the dashboard data, especially where it applies to grasshoppers. Uh, we had most grasshoppers I've ever seen and since I've been around, but I'm only 30 years old. My grandfather is 76 on the place and he said probably either one of the most amount the grasshoppers ever seen, or there might have been one other time back in the 60s. 
Last summer, the federal government added an additional $2.8 million to the original $2.6 million for grasshopper and Mormon cricket management in Montana and seven other states, in part because of the use of the new data tools. I mean, I'd walk out my there in July and August, I'd walk out my front door and through my yard, and I bet I had billions in my yard. I mean, it's just ridiculous how many there were out in the pasture. The wheat was bad sometime for part of the year, and then as it kind of matured, they went back onto their alfalfa fields and destroyed them. The Pluhars, who raise cattle, wheat, barley, corn, and hay, estimate they lost nearly 40% of their hay crop due to the double punch of a dry season and grasshopper damage. Pluhar likes the idea of the government improving the speed and accuracy of pest population tracking and predictions. I think it helped. You know, if you can track them and kind of know where they're going to hit, people can plan ahead and maybe plant more hay crops if they have livestock or be prepared to spray more. Anything to help prepare, you know. While the dashboards are, for now, primarily intended to be internal tools for government officials, plant protection and quarantine has made some data available to the public. The, uh, the whole effort is trying to be more efficient at collecting data, managing data, uh, sharing it, and looking at um, how we're spending our limited resources uh, together. Technology has come a long way. Yeah.